Hi, I'm Vicki Wessling here with City Speaks. City Speaks is a show that is uh, the vision of Mayor Rosas. It's a show to let the residents know what's happening with the city of Dunkirk. It's a show that's for you, the residents. Tell us what you want, tell us what you need, tell us what's important, what's not important. Give me a call if there's a question, 363-6888. Send an email, vwessling at cityofdunkirk.com. Send a snail mail to me at City Hall, 342 Central Avenue, Dunkirk 14048. Contact us on dunkirkaccess.com. Watch us on YouTube. So, having said all that, this is a different kind of show today because the city of Dunkirk is really becoming a destination. It's become a place not only for business and industry to move, to bring their, their business opportunities here. It's a place for our residents to find jobs, to work, to live, to recreate. But also, Dunkirk has been uh, very lucky recently to have uh, movie companies come. They want to shoot movies in Dunkirk. We have our waterfront. We have our, all of the different amenities that are here in Dunkirk that's here because of you, the residents, because of where the city is going, because of the progress that everyone has seen through the leadership of Mayor Rosas. And with that, we're going to show, uh, showcase a couple of production companies over this next 30 minutes to let you know what's happening. Today we have uh, Bob Rush with us. He's with Rush 716 Productions. And so Bob, welcome to Dunkirk. You're a Dunkirk native. Tell yeah. us a little bit about what's going on. Okay, uh, yeah, I uh, live here in Dunkirk now. I moved back here a little over three years ago from Los Angeles. I was gone for over 20 years, spent about 15 and a half years in LA and five years in Chicago working as an actor. And I uh, came home, I wanted to start making movies, start writing. So I came home and uh, over the last couple of years I've been working on a script. It's called Demolition Dance and uh, that is a uh, film that will be exclusively shot in Dunkirk. I was uh, literally saying within four miles of this location right here we were shooting this movie. Uh, we are, it's a, it takes place, uh, it's about a, a family in the fourth ward, kind of like a family garage, like the Elman's garage, a la. And uh, they're really involved in demolition derbies. And uh, it's a really great film, it's like a buddy film car movie with kind of a modern day twist. So, uh, but yeah, I moved back here a few years ago and uh, I'm loving being back in western New York. Well, and we're loving having you here. And people want to know about the movie, they can go to your website, mm -hmm. right, at www.demolitiondancefilm.com. Absolutely and find out what the movie's about mm -hmm. and see what's going on. Please do, yeah. Yeah, and we also have with us today Jordan Rosas. Now, Jordan is also from Dunkirk. You moved away to L.A. and you have come back. Tell us why you've come back. Um, so I uh, grew up here, Western New York native and all that, and um, went to UB for college, uh, moved out to L.A. afterwards, and did some, did some projects out there, some films, some theater stuff, uh, and then I based off of one of the films that I'd done uh, in the West New York area, a production company reached out to me and said, hey, you know, we, we saw this film you did, we're kind of interested in what do you think about, about this project? And I ended up hopping on board and they ended up taking me right back home to, to shoot a film here, so, so okay. it was really cool. Great, and so the, that production company, we're gonna have them on later yes. uh, as this part of the show to talk a little bit about the film that they're doing here. So that's great, and you're the star? Yeah, you can yeah. say that. <laughs> okay, well that's great. So we're, we're happy to have you here, Jordan. And you also have a relationship with Bob. Tell us how that happened. I do, so... Um, Jordan lost a bet and had to hang out with <laughs> 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 Yeah. Um, so we, <clears throat> I was, uh, it was the summer um, in college and I was obviously not in classes and so I was, looking around for acting classes in the Buffalo area and talked to some people and they said, oh yeah, you should check out this guy, Bob Rush. He does this uh, 716 acting studios over at Shays. And so I said, well, go take acting classes at Shays Theater, I guess so. <laughs> so I hopped over and it was, it was great on camera experience. I mean, Bob said, I mean, he, he's been in LA, he's got more LA experience than I do. He's been on some, you know, recognizable projects that, you know, most people are gonna, gonna recognize and whatnot. He had a ton of insight and learned a lot and if anybody's interested in acting I'd highly recommend it. Mm -hmm. Okay now you've tell me some of the projects that you've done. Uh, as an actor I'm mostly known for the show Sons of Anarchy I'd say probably. Uh, I was on uh, I shot five episodes of that overall. Um, I played uh, Skeeter the local mortician 
He works at a crematorium, kind of a offbeat, creepy guy. Uh, hard to believe. And um, <laughs> I guess also for fans of the show, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, I was on a pretty cool episode of that years ago uh, called The Gang Gets Invincible, season three. And it's actually always voted as one of the top shows of, of all time for that one. And I played the uh, character uh, Doyle McPoyle, an aspiring football player who uh, part of this family or the nemesis of the, uh, the, the leads of the, of the show. So uh, it was a lot of fun. So now you've had some experience. Mm -hmm. Tell us, what brought you back to Dunkirk? What was, what was the key that made you think it was time to come home? Well, I took a sad thing and made it a positive. Uh, unfortunately, my parents pa had passed away about seven months apart a few years back. And I was in L.A. and I felt, yeah, I was getting kind of tired of L.A. at the time. I felt uh, I wanted to start writing. I wanted to start producing. I had a theater company out there. I was called Sky Pilot Theater Company, and uh, it was my baby, and it took up a lot of my time. And I wanted to start writing and working on film, and I, I knew if I stayed in L.A., it'd be kind of hard for me to do that, because I couldn't let the theater company go. It's like, you know, throwing your, you know, your baby away or something, so I couldn't do it. So uh, I made the decision after my uh, parents died. I had, a, I had my house over here on Central Avenue. I had bought off them years ago, and uh, so I had that responsibility. It's a big house over on Central Avenue, and I decided to come home. Uh, at the time also I started dating somebody who lived here at the time and so there's a lot of reasons why I wanted to come back so I, I came back and uh, you know I knew I was kind of taking a few steps back to to eventually move forward a few steps correctly you know so uh, that's that's been my thought and started writing and uh, came up with this idea about a, a script about Dunkirk and demolition derbies um, and uh, been working on it for a couple years now and now we're at the point where uh, you know we're full go and trying to raise money for a film, so it's Great. been a and pretty gonna, neat adventure. You're, you're going to be shooting next summer. Hopefully, yeah. Hopefully next summer. Money, yeah. And now your production company is Rush 716 Productions. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with the name Rush 716? Well, you know, you always want to use something clever for marketing, and we are in Western New York. But actually, 716, to me, is more personal because my house is 716 Central Avenue. And uh, years ago, when I first got to L.A., I went about two years into my... Uh, my uh, stay there, I, I, I wasn't having much success, wasn't meeting the right people, and hadn't started working much yet. And I was getting kind of like, eh, should I be here, should I not be here? And then all of a sudden, daily almost, I kept seeing the number 716. It was the weirdest thing. Like, I'd look at the clock, it was 716. I, street addresses, I'd see 716 in there, just all the time in the weirdest places. And it just, it kind of told me that home is where you make it. It was a, it was a nice, you know, comforting sign. So like a subliminal message. It really was. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm lucky I stayed and things turned around shortly after that. Yeah. And now, of course, you're talking about filming the movie here in Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. And it'll, so I would assume that most of it's going to be filmed here in Dunkirk, right? Pretty much the entire thing. Yeah. Okay. In this, within Dunkirk or maybe possibly if you're doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Within four miles of this location right here, like I said, we're going to shoot this thing. <laughs> that, you know, and that, that is, that's really important. Now, what kind of things will this do for the residents? Will there be, uh, will extras, will you need other people tons, coming in? Tons of extras we'll need. Uh, we're going to be shooting up at the uh, fairgrounds grandstand for a couple of days. We'll need lots of extras for that. There's lots of uh, group scenes, uh, outdoors, uh, and bars. Uh, I heard there's a few bars here, uh, so we can use uh, <laughs> one and or two. a few, one or two, a couple, a couple of clubs or something we can possibly use. Uh, I, I think also we're going to be spending a lot of money here too. Um, you know, using a lot of people for catering, um, hiring local people for help, construction on, on crews, things like that. Um, with the cars itself, we're going to need a, a whole crew full of people just for demolition derby cars alone. And, and also what it does, I really believe in, in you know, community pride. Uh, Dunkirk is, a friend of mine in LA who read the script, read it and was fascinated with Dunkirk. He's like, this is like a character in a movie, your hometown. And he, and he said it was kind of like a love letter to my hometown. I, I didn't think of it that way, but I guess it kind of is when you look at it. So it, it, I think it's good marketing for Dunkirk as well for, for more films to come here as well. Right, and we've just had a film, of course, that's finished up at the Lighthouse. Widow's Point, Gregory Lamberson, Fredonia native, yeah. Right, mm -hmm. so, so that's great. So people are coming back, mm -hmm. and we're going to lose you. You're going to go back out to L.A. <laughs> well, yeah, I'll be heading, heading back out to L.A., but I want to come back. I have a few projects in mind that I would love to shoot in Dunkirk because the locations are perfect. I mean, it, there's sort of been a, almost a trickle-down effect in, in mm -hmm. film because it, it started off in Hollywood, which is where you had to be. That's where the movies were made and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Um, and then people started going to other big cities. So Austin took off, Chicago took mm -hmm. off, Atlanta took off. 
Um, and then Buffalo started getting some projects, and I lucked out over the course of being in college. I remember, I think it was my freshman year, they were shooting Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I shot one chase scene on the 33, and it was headline news for the whole week yeah. that they were shooting. Yeah. And um, and then more projects would come each each year to the point where, like Chadwick Boseman shot Marshall almost, if almost, if not entirely, in Dunkirk, and that was, I believe, that was a project he did right before Black Panther. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, they've been some. The Purge. Bonus. Yeah, Purge was the shooting Purge here. Just shot there, yeah, year. that was that was in actually Buffalo. the last project in I worked Buffalo, on before right. I went out to LA. Um, so it, it it started in in Buffalo, and then now you're seeing the areas around Buffalo coming coming mm -hmm. into Dunkirk, and it's it's all coming coming down to the surrounding areas. So it's a, it's a great thing. Um, they just shot a film, Bashir, I think it was right. That, yeah, that Bashira. was a, about a about Los Angeles, about a, a police officer in LA. So I saw the casting notice while I'm in LA mm -hmm. about a film in Buffalo about LA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and a movie called Crown Vic as well. Crown Vic, too. yeah, that's mm -hmm. another Bushira, one. Crown Vic or both shot here, yeah. So this whole area, this whole region, is really beginning to come alive, and, we're, and we're getting people are beginning to notice it for a lot of different reasons. Mm -hmm. But certainly here along Dunkirk, we have our waterfront. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's beautiful. We, we have all the things that are that are happening. Uh, Chautauqua County itself mm -hmm. is really booming. We've got a lot of things that have come into the county. So this is great that you're doing, and you br talked about bringing money in. Yeah. You know, all, we always we always want money, yeah. right? Yeah. Money, exactly. Money's important. But one of the reasons that makes it so attractive to shoot here is because of the New York State film tax benefits. Exactly. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, New York State uh, leads the nation in one of the best tax credit programs. Um, it a lot of people now are starting to notice that, and especially um, it's actually a little bit better outside of New York City for the rest of the state. It pays back a little bit more. So a, a lot of people are really into that. They want to, you know, when you're making a movie, you're trying to, for your investors, trying to save every nickel you can. And the great thing is it gives producers a chance to save money. And New York State, I think I read last year, they're making a dollar fifteen for every dollar they spend. So they're, they're profiting 15%. Uh, in, back into the state, so it's really a successful program for everybody. So, and in Buffalo, in Western New York, has with all the um, architecture, especially in Buffalo and places like Dunkirk and these, these smaller towns, you can shoot. This could be anywhere in America, right here outside these doors. Anyway, um, including we were saying like in my movie, there's an exterior shot of New York City, and that'll be shot, you know, a block or two from here. I just need a big brick wall, like of a building. Looks like Brooklyn or something. So again, it it's really has a lot of benefits, and that's and that's for all Western New York as well. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, yeah, uh, there's so much um, so much you can do with a smaller area if you're crafty with your mm -hmm. with your filmmaking, because a lot of big movies that have the uh, budgets will do some huge shots where you'll see the the lead characters on a beach, and it zooms out, and oh look, we're in you know Miami Beach. But a lot of other films will just do an, an establishing shot, which is you know, here's a, an image of something that's well known that mm -hmm. says, okay, we're in this area. So for Buffalo, it might be, oh, oh, look, here's a picture of Niagara Falls. Everybody knows, okay, we're in Western New York. And then from there, you can shoot it anywhere. And so if, you know, like talking about New York City, you don't even need necessarily an establishing shot. If it's a line about, oh, yeah, you know, the, the subway, the A train was running behind today or something like that. Well, everybody knows, okay, we're in New York City. And now you can shoot it wherever. So there's a lot of crafty mm -hmm. filmmaking stuff to get around um, obstacles that, um, good filmmakers can, can take advantage of, and that, that's what makes an area like this so advantageous. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, too, is the people are so excited about film, which is awesome. I mean, if you go to L.A. and people see, it, it could be a blockbuster right. film. You know, Brad Pitt and, you know, whoever, Scarlett Johansson could be doing a scene, and they'll see, po people see posts and notice, oh, another film, geez. it's going to interrupt my community. Blah, 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 blah. traffic. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, and it's just, because it's just yeah. so routine out there yeah. that it, where here it's like people, wow, you know, somebody's taking interest and people want to help. And that's mm -hmm. such a cool thing. And, and in L.A., people all, all, almost go out of their way to make it inconvenient to shoot in their neighborhood because they're so <laughs> sick of everybody filming. Right. But out here, people are, are excited about it, which is well, awesome. Well, because it, it is so new to us. Yeah. And any kind of recognition that we can bring to uh, mm -hmm. this area, to the western New York, Chautauqua County, and certainly to the city of Dunkirk, you know, that's what we need to do, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Because you know, we want people to know. We want Dunkirk to become the destination mm -hmm. point for Western New York. Absolutely. And so as many of those mm -hmm. types of things that we can bring in. The lighthouse is a huge draw. 
The lighthouse yeah. is humongous. Uh, they have really bent over backwards for um, Greg's film that came here at Widow's Point. And then last year, another film shot there too. Can't think of the name of it. But, um, and I know that the film commission um, in you know, Western New York is really big on endorsing the Dunkirk Lighthouse as a great place to shoot. But uh, you know, our waterfront especially though would be any film that has to be shot on the water. Oh, this yeah. would be perfect because a big reason why Jaws was shot at Martha's Vineyard was it has, it's kind of shallow there and it's very sandy and it's, it has a very long stretch going out far into the water where it's only 20 feet deep for quite a while. And that's why they wanted to put the shark on a crane and be on the f ocean floor and 20 feet down. Well, every time I'm out on my friend's boat's in the harbor here, every time I'm in the, uh, the west end of the harbor over by uh, NRG and the Con Club, I keep thinking of that. Like it's so beautiful right there and shallow. And I'm like, God, what a great place to shoot. You gotta bring equipment out here. You can load it right out there and, and bring it out and shoot. You know, you can look like anywhere. You know, so, well, yeah. you know we really have our, our our harbor and our waterfront mm -hmm. are really the jewels for the city of Dunkirk. Really Absolutely. And this past summer when we had the boat race here oh, yeah. was just, I mean, that was that was great. Yeah. So, you know, and, and I just cannot say enough about yeah. uh, how we- I was just bragging about it the other day to some people. Yeah. You gotta come home for this next year to boat yeah. race. I don't think people realized how great that was gonna be and the pride. I, I don't think I've ever seen people in Dunkirk be so prideful of living here that weekend. Right. I mean, it was such a great showcase. And, and we've had a lot of uh, positive feedback from the racers, from the entire organization. Mm -hmm. You know, and that has a lot to do with, and I, I know that probably people don't want to hear me say it, but, you know, Hector Rosas. Yeah. You know, Hector did this. Hector and, and, and the mayor. Mm -hmm. You know, the mayor says, this is my idea. Let's go forward or let's do this or what do you think? And, you know, his team makes it happen. Yeah. So. Well, it's been a great thing because for, you know, the there's been many times where crown jewels of the city have just sat dormant, but events like the boat races show the potential. And mm -hmm. for filmmaking, it's ideal because you have such a fantastic waterfront, but it's not heavily utilized. You know, if you wanted to shoot in one of the harbors of Los Angeles, New York City, mm -hmm. good luck getting in there because there's so much traffic coming in and out. Even where, Buffalo Harbor. Even, even Buffalo, even yeah. Crazy, yeah. Um, where Dunkirk, you don't, the pier is, is in good shape it, it's used for music on the pier and yeah when they're doing the dredging the the barges are there and whatnot but outside of that you're not getting you don't have to deal with ocean liners coming in all the time you don't have to deal with mm -hmm. all kinds of different boats where if you want to shoot there well you got to coordinate all right here's your little corner right. you know you want to bring in the boat races here's the whole harbor and i mean we had teams from what new zealand yes. come in for that yeah. i yes. mean it, it, yeah, it's incredible to, right. to a little right. you know little city of dunkirk but it shows what what we can do, uh, what the right. potential is here. So hopefully, uh, Rush Seven One Six Productions will do more than this one shoot, and That's hopefully, the yeah. you know, the production company that you're working with will do more, yeah. and and Greg will continue to come back. So mm -hmm. that's a big thing. That's mm -hmm. a good thing. That's happening. So, uh, what else is going on? Anything that's that's uh, you want to share or that you think that would be important for our residents to know about what's going to happen when you bring your your movie in? Well, when it happens eventually, <laughs> we're a ways off, but when it happens eventually, uh, I, I think people are going to get really excited. I mean, just shooting, uh, we shot a, a promo trailer, and it's on our website. You go to the website, demolitiondancefilm.com. You'll see that. Just people on social media, Facebook and whatnot, love it. I mean, they're sharing it with everybody. So I think they, I think people can expect to be really excited about what's, what's happening in their, in their small town. Um, they've never seen a film crew come to town. Now this will be a moderate sized film crew, not too small, not too big, but you know, it'll be a few trucks of people driving around and setting up locations and uh, it's, it's, I can imagine it'd be very exciting for people here. Well, I'm, I'm sure that it will be and I, I for one am excited and I know that other people are excited as well and Jordan, it's wonderful having a star among us. <laughs> I'll get your autograph later. <laughs> thank you. And Bob, you as well. Thank you. And thank you. And we're going to have another segment uh, to showcase uh, Puritan Road Productions. So thank you all and stay tuned. Hi, I'm Vicki Westling and we're here with the second part of our production episode of what's going on with the city of Dunkirk. We uh, have with us today our Puritan Road Production co-founders, producers, directors. We have Bethany Olzak right. and, uh, and Scott Sloan mm -hmm. here with us. And we have Jordan Rosas. One of the things that's exciting about this show is that Puritan Road Productions 
you're actually filming part of a movie here in the city of Dunkirk as we speak. You've got some things going on. Tell us a little bit first about the movie that you're producing. What's happening, of course, and it's starring Jordan. That's right. Right? Mm -hmm. So it's starring Jordan, and uh, the name of the movie is? John Doe. Mm -hmm. I'll let you take that. John Doe. <laughs> John Doe is the name of the movie. Um, it's a film that I wrote the screenplay for, and Bethany here and I are both co-producing and co-directing. Um, I'd love to say more about our crew and our staff. We have an assistant director named Matt Rittler, and we have a few other people working for us, but it's really a two-man operation, man and a woman, me and Beth here, so um, it's good to keep it nice and tight in it. <laughs> okay, and so now we talk about John Doe. Now, tell me, what is... Tell me, John. What's going on? Tell me about John Doe. Uh, so it's, I guess the best way of describing it is it's kind of like an action sci-fi thriller. I've sort of described it as like a cross between like Mission Impossible and Back to the Future. Um, and <laughs> it's, a, it's, like a, it's a story about identity and chasing one's past and how sometimes you don't always find what you want to find when you, when you look for where you come from and things like that. So it's a, it's a really cool story and I don't want to give too much of it away, so. All right, now we filmed a couple of scenes in the Willowbrook Park Cemetery. That's right. Why did we choose the cemetery? We really needed a unique location. Um, the movie involves some time travel, so we needed to find a location where we could pass a certain um, span of time. And so Willowbrook Cemetery really fit the bill for us. Um, I think people will know once they watch why we say that, um, but also just the area was welcoming. Jordan introduced us to Dunkirk, um, and we spent a whole day here kind of researching different locations and eating at some of the local establishments and really just fell in love with the charm of the place. Yeah. Well, Dunkirk is a very unique city, mm -hmm. so your uh, Puritan Road Productions is out of Buffalo. Right. How did Puritan Road Productions get started? What was the genesis for all of this? Okay. Um, originally, I had my sister Jen and I um, had made a few music videos together and had put together somewhat of a production company in hopes of going forward to make a feature film, something like this. Um, by the time I had written the screenplay, it had gotten to the point where some type of outside pro producer and outside production help was definitely needed. That's when I met Beth here, who was also a good friend of mine already that was a very um, like-minded individual with a lot of passion just like me and was very much into bringing something like this to life. So we partnered up and formed Puritan Road Productions. And um, we're very happy to be a local production company with the mindset and the attitude of a Hollywood production company. So there's, the sky's the limit for us. We don't, we don't so now you talk about a local. So you're basically out of Buffalo. Now, Beth, tell me a little bit about how did it come about, Puritan Road? How, where did you get the name, and what are you, what are you doing with that? Puritan Road is actually the name of a, a street that's in our hometown mm -hmm. that's personal to Scott and his family. As well as it's kind of in between. It's on our route to work and our day jobs right. as well, too, so it's something we see every day. But, yeah, I do have family that grew up there. So, oh, okay. so we a, attach to that name. Um, and, you know, when we decided to partner as a production company, um, we tossed a few names back and forth, but nothing really just felt kind of perfect. And we had been saying Puritan Road Productions um, mm -hmm. all the way along because that was the name that Scott and his sister had intended to use. And so when we formalized, it just fit the bill. Mm -hmm. you know, it felt right. That's who we are. Puritan Road is, you know, a big part of us. It's like Scott said, on the way to work every day. Right. We want it to be, we want to represent local and and who we are, too, if we want to show our heart. Yeah. So now tell me a little bit about your history. Tell me about how you got into making a film. <laughs> so I have mo more experience in local theater. Um, I was the president of the Amherst Players for three years, and that's a local not-for-profit theater company. Um, and so I gained most of my producer experience and director experience through that organization. Um, I also own an event planning company with my brother called Lilypad Wedding and Events. And so producing events, producing plays, producing film, they really all need the same um, structures. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's just anything that I can watch grow and then kind of witness is really exciting to me. So when I read Scott's screenplay, I really just... 
um, was excited by it. It's different than a lot of other screenplays that are in the area. And I caught the film bug um, as an extra on Coldbrook, which was produced and directed by William Fickner, um, also co-starring Kim Coates. And being on set as an extra, being able to sit back and watch how they um, just ran as a team and supported one another and just, you know, kind of from beginning to end just excited me. So that's okay. why I'm here. <laughs> so now, how did, you, how did you hook up with, uh, with Jordan? Because he was out in California. Yes, he was. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully for Facebook, I was able to stalk Jordan. I had watched him, um, so I was sick. Um, seek out, <laughs> seek, seek out, Jordan. Is what we did. <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> we researched talent. Yes. Um, I a friend of mine was in the same film. I'm sorry, I forgot the name of it. Uh, good times, uh, good never, times come. never come. Good times never come. Uh, I had watched that and I saw, you know, Jordan's performance on that, which I realized as I was watching was, you know, it had been a couple of years since that movie. And I just really thought that he was a great actor. He had really natural responses, which is something that being a theater actor is important to me. Um, and I know Scott shares the same thing. We were looking for somebody that could carry a very um, challenging role. And so I reached out to Jordan, hoping that he was still in the area and looking for some work <laughs> and was disappointed to learn that he was in California. But then we kept communicating about the film. And I'll let Jordan speak for himself on why he accepted <laughs> the offer to come out and do this for us. But um, that's, you know, how we first kind of met. <laughs> oh, good. All right. Well, being stalked was a good thing because you got a part. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it worked out. I, uh... Looked out the window, and there we were. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I was coming back from the grocery store or something like that. Got back to my apartment and, you know, saw, oh, I got a Facebook message opening up, and it was somebody, oh, you know, I loved you in this film and whatnot. And I was like, oh, cool, you know, getting fan mail or whatnot. And I look, and then I was like, and then she's like, yeah, so I got this film coming up. And I was like, oh, this is a, this is a job opportunity. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so, you know, we were talking back and forth, and they, you know, Little by little, would tell me a little bit more about the film. They didn't want to, they didn't want to, they didn't want the script to get into the wrong hands because then, you know, there's been plenty of examples over the course of film history where somebody will take a script and change yeah, a couple of details and then, now it's yours. Yeah. yeah, now it's theirs, and there goes your idea. So finally, I was able to get the script, read it, and I loved the script. I, it was one of the, it was one of the best written scripts that I'd seen coming out of Buffalo um, because it for a while Buffalo was sort of an area where sometimes big productions would come in to shoot scenes because it was cheaper or mm -hmm. uh, what was the I think it was planes trains and automobiles shot mm -hmm. one scene in Buffalo yeah. because they were like oh they have snow there we need to do a winter scene <laughs> <Exactly> <laughs> Buffalo's that. gonna have snow in the winter we'll go to Buffalo um, there's a lot of that yeah mm -hmm. and so then um, Buffalonians started coming into their own and saying oh you know we can make some films too and so there was a wide range of quality in, uh, in the beginning where sometimes you know, people were like, this is what I want to do, and it would come out really great. And other times people would be like, we should make a film. How do we do that? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so sometimes stuff didn't come out so great. Um, so it's a lot of Buffalo film stuff can sometimes be hit or miss. Um, and I read this script, and I was like, wow, there was so much depth. There was so much imagery and symbolism and references to mythology and all kinds of just deep stuff yeah. embedded in a script that you rarely see outside of professional Hollywood screenwriters. And I was like, wow, this is, this has a lot of potential to be really good. So I was, um, you know, played a little, ah, well, you know, I got this gig and that gig. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. And, and you know. <laughs> oh, you we, did. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't getting any pressure from, you know, the mayor. Or anymore. anyone like that. Like not the mayor of the town or <laughs> Well, I didn't. I didn't bring it up to him just yet because I wanted to, you know, figure out where things were. But we um, finally we all kind of said, "All right, I love this script. All right, we like you as an actor. Let, let's let's make this happen." Um, mm -hmm. And so it ended up coming out, and it's been a. It's been quite a quite a ride so yeah. far. Right. <laughs> That's when I felt like I really made it. When we had like a serious back and forth with talent trying to land a contract, that was when I was like, "Wow, <laughs> we're really there. We're producers and directors. <laughs> <laughs> we we just want to strangle this kid." Right? <laughs> 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 
<laughs> well, I think that's because that hasn't all. gone away. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you still want to strangle him, right? Yeah. Every mm. once in a while. Mm. Yeah. Well, I, well, I, no. I understand. They can't, they can't strangle me till we're done shooting my scene. Mm -hmm. So I got a few that's more. That's how he knows I love him. So now you've been shooting this. You've been shooting John Doe. You started shooting it uh, when? The beginning of September this year. And how? August first. Beginning of August. This year. <laughs> <laughs> So I think that's her job, though, to correct you, right? Right. <laughs> I was scared, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so since all this, we've been, shoot, you've been right. shooting this, when do you think you'd have it wrapped up? The end of October, mm -hmm. right? Absolutely. <laughs> that's, <laughs> next, <laughs> that's next Wednesday. Yeah. Yes, we have We're just a couple of shoots yep. left. Um, so yeah, a couple of pickup scenes and, you know, one heavy header and... Mm -hmm. Then we should be done. And, and then what happens? So now we've we've you've got to this point. You've mm -hmm. finished doing all of your scenes, all of your shots. Mm -hmm. Does it go into editing? Then you go mm -hmm. into uh, finding sponsors or or money, mm -hmm. right? Well, certainly the money is a is a perpetual, ongoing process. It never starts. It never stops. It's just always we're always looking for anything like that. Just looking to increase business. Um, as soon as we're done with shooting, we're going to go into post, which is going to be initially the editing and the sound editing, everything we have. It's basically you. As you go throughout all of shooting, you just pile everything up in the corner. And then once you're done, you lock yourself in that corner until you straighten it all out and get it into your finished product. Post is every actor's favorite part of making a movie. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the beach, guys. Yeah. <laughs> so now, so you're going to go to, and, and this is where you develop the trailer, is that correct? Mm -hmm. We're right, actually very close to releasing a trailer. It's just oh, yeah, good. Do you have any finishing. any idea of when that might happen? In the next week or two. Just a wow. few finishing touches. So now when, when you do release the trailer, Please make sure you let us know because oh, we can let our, our residents for the city of Dunkirk know also. Mm -hmm. I mean, they'll be very interested in watching it. Do you have any plans for another movie after this one? And what is that? Sky's the limit, right? Yeah. <laughs> we have a couple of ideas, you know. Um, this, is, this is certainly not a one-time thing. Okay. This is certainly Do you expect to be coming back and doing more filming in the city of Dunkirk? Yes, we would love to be back to Dunkirk. I think the benefit now is that we know what Dunkirk has to offer. You know, whereas when we were planning locations for John Doe, we really planned it based around what we knew we had access to in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. um, but now, you know, the pool is much bigger. So we definitely have our eye on some of the buildings and exteriors of some of the locations and look forward to being back. It has a, um, Dunkirk and the city of Buffalo, but very specifically Dunkirk, has a universal charm to it, I feel. Like there's a, um, like an essence to this town that translates to anywhere in America and probably anywhere in the world. I mean, I can't speak right. for that, but I feel that from a filmmaker's point of view, just from a photographer's point of view, there's just so much resource here. There's so much mm -hmm. opportunity because right. it doesn't look like downtown New York City. It doesn't look like Paris, but it looks like Dunkirk. And, mm -hmm. and there is a, there's an emotion to it that comes through. There's like a, a welcoming type of feeling, I guess. Well, well there is, and, and Dunkirk itself is becoming a destination. We have the beautiful waterfront. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have all of the different buildings, which are, we have some of the old architecture, and, you know, you can look at those. Those are things that you can bring into a, a film, I would assume. Right. Uh, but there is so much to offer here, and you speak about the people. The people from Dunkirk really are down to earth, mm -hmm. and they really do care, and they really are interested. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, these are the kinds of things that, that happen. I mean, I hear from them every day about, you know, what's happening now and what's happening right. with this. And, and, of course, when we have a local star, <laughs> you know, we'll have to have a, a signing for Jordan. That's mm -hmm. right. But certainly for, for <laughs> all of you. So I'm hopeful that you will come back and bring more, uh, mm -hmm. more films and more shoots here to Dunkirk mm -hmm. and make sure that you let us know when that happens. Mm -hmm. And now you're finishing up. You've done most of your shots, though, have been near uh, in the Buffalo area, correct? That's right. Right. And so... Tell me a little bit about the differences in shooting in Buffalo versus shooting here. It's a lot quieter out here. <laughs> <laughs> um, that it really is number one, especially for other people interested in making film around here. Mm -hmm. It's no matter where you are in Dunkirk, if you rotate 90 degrees, you can change this, your setting and your time period and anything you need. You can make anything happen within a few square miles here. Yeah, like you said, you got waterfront there, you can make it look like the forest over here, you can make it look like anything. Right. The city of Buffalo has this great, again, we're talking about character and like a universal <laughs> feeling to it. The city of Buffalo has a very specific character to it and it's that, that, that layered, old, 
and a blue collar aspect to it too, of course, but like that layered old hidden treasure feeling everywhere you go in Buffalo. Like you said about right. down here too, the architecture. There's so many things by so many famous people that you don't know about that's right around mm -hmm. your corner. And uh, I've tried my best to take advantage of that in Buffalo. I thought even before I started, went into pre-production for this, I used to just drive around the city and be like, that would be a beautiful place for this. And there's just so much opportunity. Um, and then we actually got into working in the city, which is great. Everyone's been great from the city of Buffalo and everything like that. But you just wouldn't believe the amount of motorcycle races and oh. other <laughs> unbelievably loud well, occurrences right. that take place while you're trying to shoot a really... Soft and quiet, intimate scene with Jordan right. and his co star right. suit. The neighbor's dogs and whatnot. Dogs. Yeah. Dogs that seem to react to our clapboard that starts to take. Oh, as sure. soon as we start rolling the cameras, clap, three dogs barking. <laughs> well, there was the one, one scene we were, we were shooting, and it was, what, like a six minute scene mm -hmm. that had to be done in one long, full, one long very take. Difficult, yeah. And right. these neighbor's dogs would bark at the same time mm -hmm. in the scene. Every, for what, 10 straight right. takes? 10 takes. We were trying At to least. figure out what you or Sue was saying right. that was causing it to happen. So it wasn't even like you could just edit it from a different take nope. because it was the same spot every <laughs> single sure take. Sure was. Guess there's dogs nearby in that scene. Okay. So, so what do you do with situations like that? Do you go knock on the door and say, <laughs> mm. you do it, another take? I mean, if, what can you do? Right. You if know? it was a bunch of kids partying... Then maybe we go knock on the door. You can't really do anything about a dog. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that's that's true. Well, and this yeah. is the difference between having a sound stage and between shooting in, you know, a family member's home. <laughs> you can't, right. you know, you have <laughs> only so many things that you have control over. And mm -hmm. so for us, it's more how do we not get flustered? How do we just do another take? You know, maybe we'll get lucky and the dog won't bark. How can we incorporate it and make it look like... Jordan, now you have a brand new dog. Well, you know, what right. just so you just kind right. of go with it. It's, you know, right. the magic of filmmaking. And sometimes sure. we've been lucky to have some of the background noises, like the perfect thing that we need. You know, an old mm -hmm. train goes by Every or once in a while. something happens. And so, you know, as much as you can complain about it, it's almost kind of the excitement of shooting the way that we're shooting. Right. You know, I yeah. think yeah. in the future we'll look back and say, oh, you know, it was so easy when yeah, the only issue was our dog. <laughs> but I mean, that's one of the trade-offs of shooting on location. You know, when you're shooting on a soundstage, I mean, you can make things look a certain way, but there's still Doesn't the, look. the trained eye can tell when mm -hmm. okay, this is this is artificial. You made this for the right. movie. Whereas right. if you're shooting on location, like we were shooting in some older, beautiful, architecturally built homes, and you know, I remember sitting in one of the homes and looking around, I'm like, there's no good place to put a TV here because the house was built before TVs were around. So, right. you know, the living room is just <laughs> built. There's windows and, and built for a, a more circular... Mm -hmm. So there's no, you know, they had a, a TV set up in a doorway, basically. They took away one doorway oh. um, mm -hmm. to shoot. And so it's like you, there's beautiful stuff like that about certain architecture that you just don't quite pick up if you're shooting in a sound stage where right. it's huge soundproof building and then there's the studio lot and they got security so nobody's getting in for miles we're in a busy city it's dead silent in there so it, it, it's just a different way of shooting but mm -hmm. i think that that's one of the things that makes buffalo so great is that there is so much stuff you can shoot on location um well and of course here in dunkirk there are plenty of trains that go by right. well, there are. <laughs> yeah. you know it's really exciting because typically we have we think of hollywood being the place for film right. so to have someone right here locally, right in Western New York, shooting films and making films here in this area is wonderful. So rather than have Hollywood come to this area, are you all planning to go out to Hollywood? Oh no, we would <laughs> much rather bring Hollywood here. We want not only to establish ourselves and the industry around here, we also want people to know from Hollywood that this is what Jordan was just saying, that if you're looking to shoot on location, this is one of the places you should do it. And I don't know how other, like artistically, I don't know how other filmmakers are thinking, but myself personally, if I heard, you know, this is the place to shoot, everybody shoots here, I wouldn't want to shoot there. If I heard no one's ever shot here before, it's this little hidden gem, that's what I'm looking for. I don't want my stuff to look like everyone else's stuff. I want it to have a uniqueness to it. And if you're looking for unique, we got plenty of that in Western New York. So Absolutely. And it's very authentic. So this is a very authentic mm -hmm. area. So Bethany, tell me, is there anything else that you think that's important that we want the viewers to make sure they understand about John Doe and when it gets here? Ah, mm -hmm. oh, geez. I mean, I think the biggest thing about John Doe is that we are um, 
a local production. You know, the talent is predominantly local. Yes, Jordan was in L.A., but, you know. Homegrown. <laughs> right. But we brought him home to shoot. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, we couldn't have done it without the support of Mayor Rosas and his team and uh, the communities that we've been shooting in mm -hmm. and the businesses that have allowed us to come in and shoot in their um, their places and their small businesses. So those right. places are their second homes, you know. Mm -hmm. right. And so we're just very thankful that we've had so much support. And Well, and of course, the Board of Directors at Willowbrook Park Cemetery, yeah. uh, Jordan and I met with them uh, prior to you all coming in, and they've really been terrific. So oh, we must also thank uh, Willowbrook Park. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So, well, Scott, what else? What else do we need to know? Well, I was just thinking, from the point of view of the movie and the story, you guys really have to check this out. Like, a lot of times you see in movies today, I would call it not unrelatable characters, but characters that just seem like they live far away from you. And just to have the idea and the notion of somebody as, as cool as the character Jordan plays hanging out around here, right? Yep, it took, it took a lot. <laughs> but um, it's fast paced, it's interesting. If you're, if you're a nerd and you like digging for Easter eggs, this is definitely the one you want to look for. Um, but on what Beth said about the small businesses stepping up and, and and helping us. It's not so much that they stepped up and helped us. They wanted to be in it and to see a local business owner be that excited about mm -hmm. being in something like this just was it was it was really great. It was a great right. feeling to know that other people cared as much about it. Because we get a lot of the discussions we've had on the business end of things, a lot of the discussions we've had, like you said, looking for sponsorship or for money. I, I struggle in those department, to be honest with you, because I only care about the film and I only care about finishing the film and what it looks like and what it what Especially like per, like actual day to day production wise, all I care about is putting you and the rest of the talent in a position where you can do your jobs to the best of your ability. Like I don't feel that I'm there to do anything. I feel that I'm there to help them do the job, and um, getting together with people, extremely talented people like that, that love and care as much about the craft as you do, and and Sue and Anna are other stars in this movie. Like they, everyone involved, they. It's just such a great feeling to nail something like yeah. that, to really get it. You yeah. know, they have everybody care. When you guys asked me to stay longer and do it again like that, just what a great feeling. <laughs> well, that, that's great. And we're so blessed and so happy to have a film crew here in the city of Dunkirk. Mm -hmm. We hope you come back. We hope you make more films here. We think this is the place to be. We want Dunkirk to be the destination. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you. Thank you all for coming. And yes. thank all of you for watching City Speaks. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Vicki Wessling at cityofdunkirk.com. V Wessling at, I mean, Vicki Wessling at, at uh, City Hall, blah, 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 <laughs> 342 Central Avenue, Dunkirk, 14048. Call me directly, 363-6888. Thank you, and thank you for watching.